Hey everyone, ever since I bought my mill, I've been looking to buy a boring head for it. I haven't done too much machining on the mill just yet, but I've already run into a few situations where a boring head would have made the job a whole lot easier. Now it's probably no surprise that a good boring head doesn't come cheap, so I thought I'd go ahead and make one myself. I didn't have that much material on hand, just an off cut of some old cold roll steel from an old project, a bit of brass and I think this is nylon. The steel is a bit undersized for a proper boring head, but if this one works out, I can always make a bigger one. Now normally for a project like this, I'd model it up in SolidWorks beforehand, but this time, I'll sort of make it up as I go. Fingers crossed then. The first thing I'll need to do is clean up each of the parts in the lathe. Now this piece will form the upper body of the boring head, the part that gets held in the mill. Originally, I wanted to cut a Morse taper shank so I wouldn't have to hold it in a collet, sort of just holding it directly in the Morse 3 taper spindle, but the stock was about an inch too short, so I went with an 18mm straight shank. And I really have to hand it to these new carbide inserts that I got. That's a half mil depth of cut on some cold roll steel, and we're getting a really good finish. It's not bad for a 50 cent insert. I let the part cool for a while, and the micrometer says we're just under 18 mils, which in the ballpark is what I was aiming for. Now I promised myself I'd never use the old vice again, but my collet block still hasn't arrived and for this operation I really benefit from the V-slots cut into the fixed jaw. So that's a 12mm slot cut through the part, now I need to go ahead and form the 60 degree dovetail feature. Now unfortunately the only dovetail cutter I have on hand is a little bit oversized for the job, just a little bit too wide for the slot. As a result I'm going to be cutting both sides in one pass, which is a lot for this cutter. Surprisingly though, the cut looks pretty decent, so I can go ahead and swap out the top and cut the inverse of the dovetail on the bottom piece. And I could really tell by the end that the cutter was getting a bit dull. I've always had a bit of difficulty finding the correct surface feed for these cutters, mostly because the tools cut faster at the bottom than they do at the top. However, I'm pretty happy with the results. Judging by the feel, I think I could have probably taken about 0.1 of a mil less off for a better fit, but I'm still pretty happy. For the rest of the work, I've gone back to the new vise. I need to make three M5 holes as a part of the locking mechanism. I'm drilling into a rounded surface, so without using the center drill first, the twist drills would just wander off.
Next I'll come in with an end mill and machine two flats on each side. This cut is really pushing the rigidity of the mill to the limit, but eventually taking light cuts I got a pretty good result. And before flipping the part, I'd like to machine the through hole for holding boring bars horizontally. I probably won't ever use it, but it's always useful to have it, just in case. To hold the boring bars in place, I'll be using some M5 grub screws. Typically you would find three grub screws on a boring head, but here there just wasn't enough space to have three, so I opted for two. And the same goes for the vertical holes. Typically you'd see two offset holes next to each other, but there just wasn't enough space on this boring head. I now need to make a hole for the adjustment screw and dial. My intention was to have a 15mm dial, but unsurprisingly the twist drill was not liking this type of cut. There was a fair amount of deflection once I broke through the wall. To be honest, having a boring head on hand at this time would have been really useful. Now the part didn't fit in the forge or chuck, so I opted to complete the job with an end mill. The largest end mill I had was about 10mm, so it looks like I'll be having a pretty small dial. I then tapped the lead screw for M6Y1. When I come back and make another one, I'll probably make a custom finer pitch tap for a finer resolution, possibly M6 by 0.5, but for the moment, a 1mm pitch lead screw should be fine. The last thing that I need to do in machining the bottom is machine a small channel for a flange and the lead screw to sit in. Yeah, not even 5 seconds and that 2mm end mill was broken, so lighter cuts, higher RPM. Next we can move on to machining the lead screw. Ideally I'd want to use a bearing bronze of some type, but brass was all I had on hand and it should work as an interim material. Now normally for a part like this, you'd want to use the lathe's lead screw to cut the threads into the part, but because this is more of a proof of concept part, I was happy just to use a thread die. Now I don't have a rotary brooch on hand, so I'll be using a press fitted cap head screw to adjust the offset in the boring head. I also don't have a rotary table just yet, so these hand filed notches should do the trick in dialing in the boring heads offset. 
If I ever need a precise offset though, I can always just measure the head offset using some calipers. The final part that I need to machine are some nylon gibbs. I don't know about you, but it's starting to look like a boring head. Now originally, I was going to make use of a brazed carbide boring bar, but at the last minute I switched over to a carbide insert. Seems much easier than buying a silicon carbide wheel to grind the braze carbide into a useful cutting tool. And the part fits pretty nicely. It is a little bit long though. Tell you what, I'll go cut the boring bar down, I'll give it a quick sand, and I'll join you over at the mill. Now I would test the boring head in any thick metal, but unfortunately I just don't have any on hand, so this wood is going to have to do for the moment. Well, that crosses boring head off my list of tools to get. For a proof of concept part, I think it turned out pretty alright, considering that I was sort of winging it as I went along. There are a few things I'd like to improve for the next time that I make a boring head. Those include using a larger stock, a finer pitch lead screw, making a proper dial, maybe a Morse taper shank, but overall, this tool works really well. And with that, thank you very much for watching, hope you enjoyed that one. See you next time.